This video explores common faction warfare low sec frit fits, so that if you're new to faction warfare and you see a hull and D scan and you're wondering what that hull might be capable of, you can get at least some idea of the different types of fits you'll see on each hull. This particular video explores the Kaldari frigates. The two Kaldari combat frigates are the Merlin and the Kestrel. I'll we'll start out by looking at the Merlin. So the Merlin has a 5% bonus to small hybrid turret damage and a 4% bonus to all shield resists. It has a 3-4-3 slot layout. I'm a big fan actually of the X high, 4 mid, 3 low slot layouts for frigates in faction warfare. Uh, I think it offers a lot of flexibility. You can often do more stuff and uh, 3 mid ships tend to have a, pretty sta a single pretty standard fit you will most often see. 4 mid fits often have two or more so that's something to keep in mind when you're thinking about engaging some hull. This fit is a medium shield extender blaster fit for the Merlin. Um, this fit I think is probably sort of what CCP had in mind. It uses all the hull bonuses, uses the shield resist. We take a double damage mod approach and get some really fantastic damage. Blasters hit very hard. They have good tracking. If I unload the Tech 2 ammo and I load faction, tracking is almost 500 which is uh, not literally as good as it gets, but really, really good. It's, it's as long as you're close up, you can see the range is real short. As long as you're close up, you're gonna be applying um, most or all of your damage. You have null for long range, void for short range. Um, tracking falls some, but we get really just fantastic key to DPS. Uh, the tank is buffer from the repeat, Republic Fleet Medium Shield Extender and the two small core defense field extenders. We have a single DPS rig. And then with the largest blasters and a medium shield extender, we're over on power grid, but luckily the micro auxiliary power core solves that problem for us. The hull is slow. Um, let's heat the AB. We'll be fighting the AB heated. Um, it's uh, literally the slowest Tech 1 frigate. I think the base speed is 310. Yeah, 310. So it's as, it's as slow as it gets. Um, if you're fighting somebody else that wants to be at point blank range, um, then that'll be all right. They're not working to get away. If you're fighting an Incursus um, or another brawling ship like that, But if you're fighting something that is faster than you, which is almost everything, and something that wants to be at a different range or can be at a different range, a rocket ship, um, something with beams or rails or arty, uh, it's gonna be a little more uphill. You can switch to long range ammo, but the damage goes down and um, you'll be at half fallout. So from 303 at point blank range, to 216 out to three kilometers, and then at fallout, 4.38, so it's seven and a half kilometers, you're gonna be doing half of this, it'll be 108 DPS, which is nothing to write home about. Um, so you really wanna to try to create situations where you can be right on top of your opponent, either because they also wanna be right on top of you, or maybe they entered the plex you're in, and they're a little fragile, and you're able to burn them down before they can pull range. This is one uh, Merlin fit you might expect to find. More common, at least in my experience, is a Merlin fit that disregards the shield resist bonus. Fits two webs, a scram, and an afterburner. We have to give up one of the mag stabs. Um, fit damage control, small insulate armor repair, and then we do this sort of um, standard DPS rig, bulkhead, bulkhead. We get 3.79. EHP in buffer, and then we have the normal amount we can squeeze out of the SAR. Between the two of these, we get about 6k HP. Not amazing, not terrible. Um, 
but we have way more range control. The hull's still slow, but uh, double web makes it much harder to get away from. And if we can sit right on top of them with void, lots of things will melt under that much firepower. But Kestrel has a sort of similar thing going on. It doesn't have a uh, resist bonus. All of its bonuses are rocket related. It has a rocket range bonus and it has a rocket damage bonus. Lots of Kaldari hulls are kinetic locked. It's not. It can shoot rockets of any type. That's nice. Um, and so here's a sort of standard medium shield extender. Kestrel sort of things we might expect to see. Um, Rockets and all the highs. Standard low sec control package of AD Scram Web. In this case, we've got a Republic Fleet medium shield extender for the tank. Single damage mod, uh, damage control. Uh, tech two damage mod, two small field extenders. We end up with a lot of EHP, 7.28, that's nice. 150 DPS, that's kind of modest. Um, one rule of thumb I tend to use if I'm shooting frigates with an afterburner, and I have one web, I'll use faction ammo. And if I'm shooting frigates with an afterburner and I have two webs, I'll use rage rockets. Um, as a function of the application stats and how the missile mechanics work, if they don't have an afterburner, that changes the equation. Afterburners are good for mitigating missile damage. Um, but in this case, we only have the one web. And so in most cases, I would choose to shoot faction. Um, DPS is not great, but like all rocket ships, you can fly in such a way that you try to minimize damage. Um, you know, if you can orbit close, or if you can be far away when they've got close range weapons. Um, orbiting close especially works if they have long range turrets with worse tracking. But even against blasters, if you get an orbit at 500 and they've only got one web, you'll mitigate a lot of damage. Uh, so that's a thing that's worth keeping in mind. Uh, just like we did with the Merlin, it's possible to uh, forego the medium shield extender and fit two webs. That gives better control, uh, which of course is valuable. And we can also shoot rage rockets, which help, helps with the damage. But we uh, lose the damage mod below. We've got a damage control, and then we can do one of the small ancillary armor repair or plate. We actually have a lot of spare uh, grid. Can put a plate on there. Um, so this setup has 154 DPS, 3k HP in the buffer, and then the sort of normal amount in the repper. Um, you can go uh, try marks, but as per usual, they slow you down. If we go bulkheads, we suffer less of the speed penalty, and we actually get more EHP in hull. And again, a uh, big fleet flight, that would be a problem, because we would get shot, we'd lose some hull, we'd catch reps, they would fill up our armor, then they would come back to us. Um, nobody seriously hull tanks, fleet ships with armor reps, but for a frigate that's in a 1v1 fight, all of your armor and hull serves as the buffer and as long as you've got some of that left, you can continue to get off reps. So between the 3.5 and the almost 2.5, again, we're coming in at right around 6K EHP. Um, the range bonus goes really well with rage rockets. Uh, normally rockets are at the 10. With rage rockets, it would only be 8.44 with perfect skills. Here it's out, out to 12.7, so we don't have to worry about our rocket range. If they're in scram and web range, they're in rocket range. If we don't want to fill around with active reps, if we'd prefer not to get burst through, then uh, we could do a setup something like this with a plate, damage control, and then the rest of the setup the same. And that makes uh, all of the EHP buffer, which makes it easier. If the DPS is real high, we still get all of it. But then there's a synergy between the plate and the trimarks. Speed is a little lower. You could also put bulkheads, then it's better. The plate itself does have a speed penalty, so if you're worried about the speed, maybe the active option is better. Less so, the buffer option is better. Um, I feel like this is the one I see the most. 
and then maybe this one, and then maybe this one. You kind of got to think about um, how will I match up against all three of them when you're getting ready to fight. This one, because the hull is slow, uh, often you can dictate range. And if you were hoping for double web armor and you engage, and it's single web medium shield extender, most ships with an AB, a scram, and a web can burn away from the relatively slow Kestrel. Merlin couldn't if it's got a single web, but most ships have enough speed to leave if you need to. The armor double web variants have more control, but again, because they're so slow, if you're on top of them with something that has a lot of damage, this one maybe you can burn down. And then this one has buffer, but gains uh, even slower. Um, so if they enter on you, that's maybe one option. If they're already in there and they're double web, it's real hard to make progress against that if you're single web. Uh, again, unless you're comfortable fighting at all ranges. The Kaldari attack frigate is the Condor. Um, you see very, very few Condors in space, or at least I do. Uh, one option is a kite fit, so MWD, long point, light missile launcher. The damage tends to be very low, but if they're buffer fit, you can tickle them to death. You can hold them if, you, if they warp into you. One of the problems is that everybody expects Condors to be kite fit, and so um, mostly people are not going to want to enter Plex on you. Um, if you enter Plex on them, that's fine. You can try to do that with Micro Warp Drive, get off the pulse, get past their scram, and then slowly light missile them to death. Uh, another option is a sort of brawling Condor um, that leans real heavily on a Newt. So medium shield extender, normal control package, AB scram web, micro auxiliary power core to make it all fit, damage control, and then small field extenders, and then the Newt. And the idea is to orbit them, try to Newt them out. If they've got an active tank, if they've got hybrids or lasers, their weapons will turn off once they're Newt out. You have some buffer, which gives the Newt time to work. Um, isn't that a bad option? I would fly something like this. Um, if you're planning on engaging a Condor, think about the kite fit. How do you feel about that? Think about this fit. These are the two you'd have to consider. Uh, make sure you're comfortable with. Kildare Navy Hookbell. It's a classic. Very popular faction frigate. Um, rockets are a great weapon system. They let you fly defensively um, either with a close orbit or distant orbit, depending on what kind of weapons your opponent has, um, mitigate a lot of damage. And then five mids is just an awful lot of mids. Uh, a lot of faction warfare uh, centers around range control, and with five mids you can fit a double web and a medium shield extender. Um, there's some advantages to buffer tank. It's easier to run than active tank. It also is impossible to um, burst through with either DPS or alpha. Two lows, uh, damage control, uh, BCU for more DPS, and then uh, damage rig, two core defense field extenders, and you end up with almost 8k EHP, which is pretty good. 245 DPS, which again is pretty good. Um, the hull's not extraordinarily fast, but the double web does a lot of good on that front. Um, you're a little bit tight on CPU, so um, the, the webs have to be compact, the DCU, the BCU, uh, kind of everything's compact to, to make it all fit, but it's still a very powerful frigate. This fit's very common, and then the other fit you might run into is sort of a similar setup, but with uh, track instructor instead of medium shield extender, uh, small ancillary armor wrap, um, and then bulkheads instead. You lose some EHP in the buffer, you gain some EHP in the active rep, and you gain a TD, um, which has some value. Uh, caps under a lot more pressure, so you're more vulnerable to something like a newt than uh, the medium shield extender version is. I like this one less. I feel like this is sort of a more of a universal fit. This is a little more specialized. You maybe have a little bit easier time against some turret ships, uh, a little bit harder time maybe against rocket ships. Um, DPS is a little lower. Uh, let's see these guys. Um, you know, maybe 80%, 85% of the DPS of the MSC fit. Um, 
but these are so these are the sorts of things you should picture in a hook pill when you're thinking about should I engage um, if you're not comfortable fighting something with dual webs that can either orbit you close or uh, orbit far away at the edge of scram range um, and also do a, a sort of boatload of damage, then uh, you got to think about if you want to hang around when the hook pill shows up. Uh, and then the other one is the Griffin Navy issue, which is really just almost exactly like a bad hook pill. Almost nobody flies it. It's a real slim, similar slot layout. After the ECM changes, all of the ECM bonuses are sort of irrelevant for solo. So you're sort of just using the slot layout. Um, the damage bonus is four functional turrets, I think. Yes, four functional turrets. There's a lot of blasters. You can get some good damage. Uh, double web is nice. Uh, buffer tank is nice. Um, one upside to the Griffin Navy issue, people mostly know what the hook bill can do. Um, they mostly respect it. The Griffin Navy issue is rarer and less respected. Um, so I think you'd probably get more engagements with it. So that's a trade-off. There's an advantage there. Um, when you think about engaging a Griffin Navy issue, you have to think about how will I feel about a buffer tank, blaster fit, double web ship sort of bearing down on me. Um, what does my ship have that can handle that? And then if not, of course, you would have to think about uh, not engaging if you don't think you can handle that. Um, so that's the Kaldari ships. The Castro Merlin is the combat. Condor is the uh, attack frigate. Don't see many Condors. Don't see many Griffin Navy issues. You do see a lot of Kaldari Navy hook bills. Thank you for watching.